Hello and welcome to The Maths Matrix. My name's Rebecca and in this video we're going to do a really quick revision session of fractions work. If your fractions work is not particularly strong, then I suggest that you don't watch this video. I suggest that instead you go back and watch my fractions series where I do fractions work more slowly with lots of worked examples and lots of practice. If you're just looking for a really quick recap, then that's what we're going to do here. Everything that you need to know about fractions really quickly. So if you just put a title of fractions and then put a subtitle of cancelling down fractions. And then just put to cancel a fraction down Find a number that both top and bottom divide by and divide by it. Keep going until they have no more common factors. And then just put EG. Forty eight over seventy two. Each of those will divide by twelve to give us four over six, and each of them will divide by two to give us two over three and two and three don't have any factors in common. So then I've finished canceling down. So that's how you cancel down. Just keep dividing top and bottom by the same number until there's no more same number that they both divide by, okay? Then put a subtitle of adding and subtracting fractions. And then put before two fractions can be added or subtracted they must be expressed over a common denominator And then just put EG four ninths plus two fifths. Then we can get a common denominator by timesing those bits together. So our common denominator can be 45. To get from there to there, I've multiplied by five. So I need to do the same to the four. To get from there to there, I've times by nine. So I need to do the same to the two. And then 20 plus 18 makes 38 and I'm working in 40 fifths. Okay. If you need to just put an extra note that says don't add the bottom numbers. And then if we were subtracting we do the same thing, except at the end, instead of adding, we take away. So if that was a take, then that would be a take. And the overall answer would have been two over 45 because 20 take 18 is two. But adding and subtracting are done in the same way up until the last stage, okay? If you then put a subtitle of multiplying fractions, And then put to multiply two fractions times along the top times along the bottom and cancel if necessary. E 
J uh, three eighths times two sevenths. Well, three times two is six. Eight times seven is 56. And then each of those divides by two to give three over 28. Okay. Then put a subtitle of dividing fractions. And put to divide two fractions. Change the divide to a times. And flip the second. And then put e.g. Um, so have two elevenths divided by four fifths. So we change the divide sign to a times. We flip the second fraction upside down. The first fraction stays as it was. And then it becomes a case of times in along the tops and times in along the bottoms. And then if you can cancel, you do cancel. So that we get five over 22 overall for that one, okay? Dividing is the one that people most commonly forget. Therefore, it's the one that exam boards most commonly test. So make sure you know how to divide with fractions. Aside from them explicitly testing it by just saying, here are some fractions, divide them. They can also check your ability to divide fractions in speed distance time questions. So if you're doing speed equals distance over time and they give you a portion of an hour to do it with, like three quarters of an hour or a quarter of an hour, they're testing your ability to divide fractions in disguise. There are usually one or two explicit fractions questions on an exam series, but there's also usually a couple of hidden ones as well. So it's important that it's really strong. Um, what I should have mentioned in the multiply is that in maths, of means times. So if ever you're asked to find a fraction of a fraction, if you're perhaps asked to find um, four fifths of um, three elevenths of means times in maths. So they'd be asking you to find four fifths times three elevenths. So if you want to put a little note about that, then pause the video, write the note, and then hit play when you're done. If you encounter whole numbers in fractions work, you treat them like they're over one. So what I mean by that, is if you're asked to divide um, five sevenths by three, then we would treat that three like three over one. So that you would do five sevenths times one third. So a whole number is really being divided by one. It's just that to save time in life, we don't go around writing three as three over one. We don't go around writing five as five over one, because why would we? Um, so a number on its own is really being divided by one. So just put it over one and then treat it like you would any other fraction. All right, carrying on from that, just put if in an exam, you are given a question involving mixed numbers. You must convert them to improper fractions first. After that, the usual rules of fractions apply. And then put that down as an example. 
Now, if you don't know how to convert mixed numbers to improper fractions, then actually go back and watch the video in the series about that. There's a video entitled Fractions Part 4, Mixed Numbers and Improper Fractions. If you watch the first part of that video, that will show you what to do. If I convert that into a mixed number, sorry, if I convert that into an improper fraction, I'm going to get 25 over 6. If I convert that into an improper fraction, I'm going to get 11 over 5. And then I just apply the usual laws of fractions then. So change the divide to a times and flip the second fraction upside down. So that I would get 25 times 5 is 125. And 6 times 11 would be 66. If they then asked you to put your answer back into a mixed number, make sure that you do. So that would be one full one. And if we take 66 away from 125, uh, 59, 66. All right. So if they say put your answer back into a mixed number, make sure you do it or else they'll take a full mark off you. The numbers aren't always very kind on exams. Sometimes people presume they've gone wrong because they have something like that, 59, 66, that just isn't a very nice and everyday looking fraction. But don't be put off by that. Um, they work exactly the same as simpler fractions. Just you might have to do a bit more legwork off to one side to find out what the answer is. You also need to be able to find fractions of quantities. To do that, just remember that to find one third of something, you divide that something by three. To find one fifth of something, you divide the something by five. To find one eleventh of something, you divide the something by eleven. So if you need to find five elevenths of something, you would first find one eleventh by dividing the something by eleven. And then in order to find five elevenths, you would times your answer by five. If you wanted to find three fifths of something, you would first of all find one fifth and then you would times that by three to give you the three fifths that you need. You're not going to be on a higher tier paper asked about fractions of quantities in its own right, but it is something that you might need to do as part of a larger problem question. So do make sure that you can do that as well. And that's everything you need to be able to do with fractions. So you need to be able to cancel them down. You need to be able to add them, subtract them, times them, divide them convert mixed numbers into improper fractions, improper fractions into mixed numbers, and you need to be able to find fractions of quantities. When you can do all that, then the fractions questions on an exam should be nice, easy marks for you. If you're going for one of the higher levels, just bear in mind that all these rules of fractions also apply to algebraic fractions. So if you are going for a level 7, 8, 9, and especially if you want to do A level, or if you're already on A level, it's really important that you know your fractions work very, very well, because not only do these rules apply to plain number, but they also apply to fractions where you might have something like 2x plus 5 over x squared minus 3 and things like like that. So if you're given fractions in algebra, all the same rules about adding, taking, times in and dividing still apply. So hopefully that super quick revision session helped. I'm going to pop some questions on screen. I do warn you the numbers aren't very kind. They are very much like this where you're going to have to do a lot of long multiplication and long division to do some of them. But that's as they might be in an exam. So it's as well to practice. Have a go at them and then when you've done them, there'll be another sheet with all the solutions on. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.